Welcome to Lemons.com and our lab video series in Cisco ICE 1.2. You can find a complete list of ICE video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we are going to look at new features and changes that were introduced to ICE 1.2. And we're not going to go through the whole web interface since we already did that back in the ICE 1.1 introduction video. So I assume here that you guys are somewhat already familiar with the ICE 1.1 web interface. And I'm just going to work off the lab setup from the previous IS 1.2 upgrade video, so that way we have some traffic already to look at. So for our lab diagram, it looks pretty much the same as our previous IS 1.2 upgrade video, except for that our IS server has already been upgraded and running 1.2 version. And again, the server is currently running on the IP of .102 and VLAN 32, and we have the Windows 2008 domain controller, DNS server, and certificate authority server, the IP of .40. As far as L scenarios or authentication authorization policies, we have a profiling or a wire map set up for our IP phones and access point. Then we have our wire 802.1x set up for our domain computer with user admin 1. And we also have a guest login or access set up using our guest computer. And all of these are already working, so now we're just going to review them on the web interface. So there won't be any configuration on the ICE itself in this video. Okay, so the way we're going to do this is we're just going to go through the Cisco online documentation or release notes for version 1.2, and that way we can just go through the list, as you see right here on our web browser, new features on ICE 1.2. And we're just going to go from top to bottom and go through one features at the time. Okay, so starting out from the top, you can see 1.2 now support the new UCS hardware, and this is UCS C220 with the model number SNS 3415 for the small deployment and SNS 3495 for large deployments. Okay, so those are the new appliance. Next, we have the improved and performance scalability, and now IS 1.2 supports up to 250,000 concurrent endpoint, which is an increase from 100,000 from the previous release. Okay, and next is the major feature addition, which is MDM integration or interoperability with Cisco ICE. And these are the list of the MDM provider that ICE currently support. And to show you the respective configuration location on the web interface, you can see here under the administration, you might notice an additional menu option down here for MDM. And this is where you will configure it and the ICE to point to whichever MDM, whether it's on-premise or the cloud-based MDM, which you will look at the separate videos right here, IP address, the authentication information for your MDM integration. Okay, the next feature is a map for non-Cisco switches, which is not going to go any further. It's not much to look at. So it's just a new feature. It's all support. Next is the support for universal certificate, also so known as the wildcard certificate. As before, if you have the distributed environment, you had to have the individual certificate or unique certificate installs on each of those nodes. But now with the wildcard certificate, you can just have one single certificate generated and being shared among all of your nodes in your distributed deployment. Okay, and that way you save the number of certificates you need to have signed or pay for, because obviously most likely it has to be trusted or signed by a trusted root certificate or third party. And at the same time, when you have the unified certificate install on all of your ICE nodes, especially the policy service node, and there's a failover, the client wouldn't have to be prompted for accepting a new certificate. Okay, and we will look specifically for our wildcard certificate deployment in a separate video. Okay, next is policy sets. So what policy set does is just to make ICE configuration processed for the policies, authentication authorization, similar to the ACS5.x with the service selection policies and access services, which is like a two-step matching process. If you guys are familiar with the ACS5.x, currently with ICE, if you look under the policy and whether it's authentication authorization, it's just basically a flat table, which goes uh, from top to bottom as far as the rule matching. Now to enable the policy set, what you have to do is to go under administration and settings. And here down below, you see a policy set and by default it's disabled. So we're going to go ahead and enable those. So click save. And now it's just asking you to relock in. So let's go ahead and do that. And immediately, if you go again under the drop down here, you can see that you no longer have the authentication authorization as a separate menus. So both of those are combined into a single policy set, as you can see here. 
So this little panel right here is equivalent to the service selection policy. So you can create like a top level services that you first want to match and then we'll kind of drill down into a sub policies under that. Since by default, we already have the authentication authorization policies configured. So once you enable policy set, they will get moved over to the default policy set. As you can see here, we have two separate sections. The top section is for authentication policies, which you can see we have the Allen map and .1x authentication. And then the bottom section is for the authorization policies. Okay, so now what you can do, you can pretty much create like a separate matching policies for different type of services, just like ACS5.x, where you might have like wired.1x, wire, or let me say the wired doesn't have to be .1x, but wired in general, wireless, or device admin, or even VPN. And then you can keep those groups of policy separated based on the service type. Okay, and this is the way we're going to be configuring our IS 1.2 on in our future videos. So you see exactly how we're going to be able to leverage this policy sets. Okay, so next feature is profiler feed service. And this is to allow ICE to get an up to date, whether it is the profile definition or the OUI updates from IEEE. So it's just the feed service and this is located right here under administrations, feed service and profiler. So by default, it's disabled. So if you want to enable those, let's check the box. Although you can input the feed service subscriber information, there's not a need to, and then just click save. And then any updates that Cisco make on profile definitions or UI will get pushed to your ICE server automatically. Okay, so the next feature is logical profile. If you remember with the previous version, if you want to utilize the device type, it's figured out as far as the profiling, and that's under the profiling policies. What you have to do is to get under the specific device profile. Here, let's say we are dealing with a Cisco access point. And what we have to do is to choose this button right here to create a matching identity group. And this is how the endpoint identity group gets created where you can reference as part of the policies, which is exactly what we are doing right here. So let me show you just to remind what I mean right here. So once you have those identity group created, you can utilize them right here with the Cisco access point and Cisco IP phone. So what it means is if you have 10 different device type, you're going to have to list them out right here one by one. Okay, so now what the logical profile allows you to do is to create a logical group of those device typed into a single container. So let me show you, it's still under the profiling policy. You can see right here, Underneath, there's a logical profile, and then you can pretty much add. And for the name, let's call something like LM non user devices. And you can put uh, whatever descriptions you want. And then we just need to look for the device type. And this corresponds to those device profile that you saw under the profiling policies. And let's say we would like to place then or select Cisco access point. And we also like to find or choose the IP phone right here and then submit. So we now place those two device type under a single logical group. And to utilize it, we go back to the policy set. Let's update our authorization policies to use the logical profile for this rule right here. So first we need to remove all this identity group that it's currently referencing, put it back on any. And now under the condition, we're going to select an attribute value and that's under endpoint and here right there as an option for logical profile and this is our logical profile we just created so you can see it's a single reference to the profile a logical profile itself instead of individual identity group okay and everything should continue to work the same way so save just to make sure that's the case let me go and shut no shut the ports for the phone and access point and we'll Later on, make sure you come back and authenticate successfully using a logical profile. Okay, so moving on to our next feature, which is enhanced guest and sponsor page. As you might already see in, in the previous video when, with the upgrade, where we saw the new look and feel of this sponsor. Actually, I can show you the sponsor one right here. Okay, so new sponsor page. Let's lock in, and the guest lock in page looks exactly identical to that and this is once you lock into the sponsor portal this is what you get and the main thing is if you remember and you redirected to the guest portal on your mobile device whether it's iphone or ipad the layout 
off the page doesn't really fit your mobile device so you kind of have to awkwardly scroll left and right just to find the lock-in boxes but now the eyes will be able to detect the type of your mobile device then be able to present the lock-in page that fit the device uh, screen size. Okay, so that's for the enhanced guest and sponsor page. 